Hey everyone, this is Rob. Hey Michelle. And welcome to Boon Babe, your weekly podcast and everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. <music> Alright, so this week up on the docket, we are going to be starting off with updates from ourselves, mostly Michelle. <laughs> um, but, and then we don't really have that much to go over this week, unfortunately. <laughs> so it's okay, we'll I have probably, a lot of stuff to talk about in the beginning. Yeah, so we'll probably try stretching that out a little bit, probably talking about random off-topic stuff because there's only really two things to talk about this week which is going to be the q a which i'll be going over their q a yes our the q a from the mods sorry and then we'll be going over the diversity and inclusion update so that is going to be the only update for this week not a ton I mean, there's a little bit of a quest speed running update too yeah but i mean for the two people that care we will be talking about the quest speed running i update. care about it and you'll see why but um, yeah, so not a ton to go over, and then we'll be ending off with a Q&A like we normally do. Mm -hmm. But before we get into all of that, Michelle, how is it going? It's going well. So I was talking last week about how I've been at Motherload Mine. I mean, I hope I talked about this last week. I've been at Motherload Mine trying to get like collection logs to green log it, and I was able to get one of the items I need today, so I only need one more. So I need like 90 mi 99 more gold nuggets. Just 99 mining. Yeah, 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 basically. Uh, I actually did get my mining up, though. So now I'm 86, which is pretty cool. It's I pretty guess. fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> I thought okay. I was already 86, so that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, I never pay attention to my levels, apparently. Reminds me of my room crafting when I thought I was 77 like five times. Yeah, that was great. Every level, you're like, what? I'm only 60. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, it's um been an interesting week. I've just been doing, like, a lot of chambers. I haven't seen any purples. Like, and our team nice. at all this week. That's good. But I've been raiding with a lot of people who are going really dry. So I'm being, like, very... They're all just getting stuff without you. No, they're not. I'm, like, I've been, like, low-key telling people, like, if you're going to raid, wait so I could raid with you. And, uh, yeah, I'm being very, like, expectant of seeing a purple, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny because there's so many shout-out true noob who keeps uh, doing truth or dares. And, like, their dares when I'm at raid, doing raids is like don't say a any words that have the letter z in it like the entirety of ulm otherwise i have to give up all my loot to the people i'm raiding with mm -hmm. and like i said i'm very expecting a purple now so they did that last night what and words I, do you say with z uh what got me the other time they tried to have me do it the entire raid and i lasted 10 minutes but i said gz to somebody and i tried to i realized i was like geez geez and well, i was like wait g sells a z <laughs> I was going to say, if we're being technical, that's not actually the letter Z. That's short for congratulations. Yeah, but I still say, I literally say G, Z. <laughs> I, I don't know. But that one, it wasn't my entire loot. It was um, just 10,000 gold because I was expected to do the entire raid. And that would yeah. have been <laughs> super hard. I only lasted 10 minutes. But that's been kind of cool. Uh, they also had me do that the other day, trying not to say prayer the entire time I was at Ulm. And then someone was like, explain the fight. What do you do? And I was like... So what you do, you uh, you send out these good vibes that like the magic won't hit you. You could just say, <laughs> you could just say use overheads. Yeah, but I'm scared I'll accidentally say overhead prayer. Oh, yeah. So I'm having it the first time. Whenever I accidentally said GZ, I was definitely like not even thinking about what I was saying last night because it was at like three in the morning. I was doing this. Oh my god, I was like so scared to say anything. I was saying everything in my head like five words at a time before I spoke. It was great. That's cool. Yeah, dares are fun. <laughs> yeah, that seems really cool. Kind of like on the same vein as dares, we added a stream loot to the stream, which is pretty cool. So if you don't know. Yeah, I don't know what these are. Okay. So basically, stream loots, you go on this website that I, it's like linked in our panels on Twitch or exclamation point SL to go to it. And you buy packs of cards. And these cards will, I have like a few categories that are OSRS, horror games, just chatting, and just general ones. So the cards, like, have you do stuff, basically. Okay. So um, they have cards that are, like, super common and cards that are rare. And you can, like, break cards for resources and build other cards. Oh, okay. One that dating is trying to get is super rare. It's uh, to make me win a game of LMS because that would be, like, an entire week of content, me trying to win LMS. At least. Yeah, at least. But uh, some examples that they were doing yesterday, Kofi, Ninja, and Dating all combined were using these things back to back to make me keep lifting up my hands at ohm like for five seconds to 15 second intervals and just like freezing when i'm at ohm and stuff like that That's i was weird. so close to dying i was like less than 10 hit points at one point and i didn't have any overheads on they timed it so uh my prayers went off and uh 
I got so lucky. It shot me with mage and it just didn't hit me for anything. I should have died. Okay. It was scary. It was kind of stressful. It was funny though. So if you want to do stuff like that, or it plays like sound alerts, like it plays the jump scare noise that does, I'm pretty sure is a baby crying, which is kind of funny. And there's a zombie dying. That one's sketchy. Yeah, the baby one's terrifying. Yeah. Gives me nightmares. But it's kind of cool. You could also get a subscription on there, which is $5, which by the way, if you subscribe within the next like 20 days, my first month having this, I get the full $5 rather than a split of it. Wow. They split more than Twitch does, though. I think it's like 80%. Wow. But with that, you can uh, play like these GIFs or emojis on the stream. And Kofly is the only one who's done that so far. And it was like every minute you can play a GIF and kept playing this twerking hot dog and found out less than 24 hours after getting it that there's a max of 100 times every month. Wow. And Kofly's already used 100. Really? Yeah. In less than 24 hours. You can do it every minute. Oh, that's lame. Yeah. I mean, at first I was like, that's kind of crazy that like, you do it that much. It makes sense that there's a limit to, five, to 100. Yeah. <laughs> but it was really funny because I'm like, how did you use every single bonus that you have for the month in one day? <laughs> I mean. There's a lot of twerking hot dogs and twerking Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> that's a lot more than I would have thought. Yeah. It was. Uh, it's really interesting, though. I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> but yeah. Other than that, it's. I have been playing some scary games, so I finished Resident Evil 4. I don't remember if I said that last week or not, but I've started this game now called The Beast Inside. Yeah, it looks kind of weird. It's very odd. It's very creepy, and after playing so many Resident Evils, like, you can kind of, like, go after... I said this whenever I started Resident Evil. I'm not used to this, but you go after and you, like, attack stuff in the game. Like, it's very um She's not offensive. used to shooting things. Yeah, I'm not. And, um... So whenever I first started that, I was like, this is weird. But now after playing three Resident Evil games and going back to a game where it's like a story and you have to do stuff, like you can't just like shoot your way out of it. Yeah. It's like, I forgot how creepy it could be. Because <laughs> like you see, I was like crawling and I saw something ahead of me that I could tell like once I walked a certain path, it would like trigger and run at me. And I just saw it and I was like, I just have to do it. There's nothing I could do. I just have to walk towards this creepy thing. Yeah, that's like kind of what uh, we were saying like a while ago or at least what i was telling you is like the reason people that are comfortable in shooting games are scared of games is because they can't do anything in them exactly and the reason that people that don't play shooting games are scared of shooting games is because they are forced to do something like that yeah it's bittersweet both sides really yeah it's the opposite of what they are used to doing is what they have to do which is why it's intimidating and then right after this game i think i'm gonna go to resident evil 5 and automatically be scared of being active again (laughs) you're like uh this game's pretty cool. It's, like, in the 70s. I don't really know what's happening. This guy found a journal, and he's, like, a spy, and Soviets are coming for him. I don't know. It's a lot. But in the past, also, this guy was, like, having hallucinations. It's just crazy. It's very interesting, though. I want to play it tonight. I was going to play it last night, but I ended up reading too much. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I, I think it's funny because I don't know if it's something you just figure out after playing video games for a long time or what but like that's kind of one of the reasons that i don't really like scary games is because i kind of look at games from like more of like a mechanics standpoint and so mm-hmm. like i before i go into things i usually figure out like what they're trying to get me to do and then just like do that with avoiding like most of whatever is in the yeah, way in scary games you're confronted with it you have to do it yeah you have to run into stuff like yeah that's why I like the resident evil games like i see the enemies like I see their weaknesses and I'm like, all right, you could like, I just am already imagining ways to exploit like all of their like shortcomings and stuff that obviously are put there by the developers. I'm not like Mm -hmm. some kind of scientist or something, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I see that right away because I look for that type of stuff. So that's why it's like, I don't know. Those games are like not super, I guess not those types of games, but just story games in general are Mm -hmm. kind of not really interesting to me because i could i just beat them and then that's it i like story games i like games that you could beat actually yeah because i don't think i can have multiple games like osaris that keep playing forever yeah that's why i've i'm kind of the opposite like i've become like more pretty much an online gamer at this point which Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people are nowadays but back in the day it'd be like oh cool this new ratchet and clank game came out on like the playstation i'll just beat it in like six (laughs) hours and i'm like all right cool because you just like steamroll all the bosses, even on like hard difficulty or whatever. Because I can't do that, but yeah, yeah, you just you just figure these things out over time, I guess. Yeah, I think I like it. Just if I didn't have old school RuneScape, I probably wouldn't like it. But because I'm like, this is just a temporary game. This is not my main game. I yeah. enjoy it. 
Something that I was surprised by in this game, though, is that at one point I did have like a low key boss fight. And I was getting oh, kind of that. frustrated because yeah. I was like, I didn't know it was this kind of game. Yeah. <laughs> I was stuck in an area to like kill this ghost thing. I don't know. And now I'm at a part that's very reminiscent of Rat Catchers, where I have to go and like it's... pass people without them noticing. Really... That's when I stopped the stream. Yeah, it's really funny you mentioned that because there's a there's a Rat Catchers update this this update. Oh. Oh, I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Random. Yeah, it's um like the part in Rat Catchers where you have to just go without anyone seeing you. It was kind of like that in the game. So I was like, okay, we are done for tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird because Rat Catchers is a really old quest, and they recently made it like way easier in this update. Okay, I'm interested in that. Uh, yeah, some other things that I've had going on. We are planning a disc movie night for this Discord Saturday. Movie Discord movie night. For this Saturday, the tentative time is at 1 a.m. Pacific Standard Time per Ninja's request. We'll see. I'm going to post it on Discord. So if you have, I mean, you'll already see it because I'm going to post it a day before this comes out. But let me know if you have times that work better for you. But we're thinking Saturday. It has to be at night because I have stuff during the day. And I'm also undecided on the movie. So let me know any movie recommendations you have. Okay. Uh, and hopefully Robert will join us for that. Yeah, maybe. Depending on the movie. Hopefully. Another thing is I have a lot of things. Like, that's why I was like, it's okay. There's not as much updates because I have a lot of things. Yeah. We are sponsored by Factor again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what Factor is, we've been sponsored by them a couple times, actually. It is prepped food that is delivered to you. You would choose from, like, a big menu, basically. And they have, like, all the dietary options, vegetarian, vegan, keto, I mean, you could probably make it paleo. I don't know if that's actually an option. I don't know. All the things. But you basically choose some meals. They get delivered to you. And all you have to do is heat them up. The cheapest option, last time at least, was four meals for $40. And if you guys order any at all, you only have to order once. We get $125. So if you live in the U.S. and want to support us while getting food, this is the way to do it. They're pretty good. They're really good, actually. Yeah. Last time, whenever we ordered it, Roberts never got delivered. And instead of being like, we'll re-deliver it, they're like, we're going to refund you. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think in general, since we've had it a couple times now, I'd probably rate the meals as like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. But the really? fact that it saves you like a really good amount of time, I guess, makes it higher. Dude, the meal... Okay, the last meal I didn't like as much because the first meal that we got, I was actually obsessed with. I ordered it twice. Yeah. That one was like a 9 out of 10 for me. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously some are different. Yeah. That one, oh my gosh. It was like a mushroom marsala or something. I don't know. It was really good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I hope that that one's back and I could order it again. <laughs> I'm not sure if we should even order, though, because we on my next thing. We're going to the Netherlands in two weeks. <laughs> we are going to the Netherlands. So I don't know if we should even order food because I don't know if it'd be here. Yeah. So I think the episode that we're supposed to have at the end of November, I don't know if we are going to have it. Or if we are not. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we'll... Hopefully we could have it and like maybe if you have any more questions, send them in faster. Because we're just going to mostly be talking about us. We could go over stuff on like Reddit though. Hopefully the they talk about the game jam. The game jam by then. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm sure since it'll be the the Turkey Day holiday for... Worst holiday. For the United States, there's probably... Not going to be a ton of updates, I'm guessing, mm-hmm. except for maybe a holiday update. But, I mean, it's a game in the UK, so I don't even know if they will do that. They never do ho- uh, Thanksgiving ones. Yeah. I do think it's funny because I'm not – Thanksgiving is, like, really boring to me. Like, and It's the worst holiday. Robert as well, like, we both really love Christmas. So we've already started decorating for Christmas a little bit. And it's funny because people on stream are, like, making fun of me for playing Christmas music sometimes. They're like, there's still Thanksgiving. And I'm like, first of all, not even everyone even, like, celebrates Thanksgiving internationally let's just skip to christmas let's just get to the good stuff yeah i mean pretty much i <laughs> i don't want to go on a like a rant on here but i talk every year about how thanksgiving is the actual worst holiday <laughs> and it's like become so much so that there's many reasons why it is the worst holiday now it's funny because everyone's like but i like food and i'm like just make good food for fun yeah maybe it's just because we well, like robert's a good cook and like makes good food all the time but i'm like I feel like Thanksgiving is not even the best food that we have because we make better food normally. It's it's not even <laughs> it's not even that good of food unless that's like really your thing. And on top of that, it's really just like a gross amount of food. Like it's 
I don't know. Like, it's just we such always, an insane amount of food. We always have so much leftovers, and I'm like, I don't even want these leftovers. I'd rather have, like, a burger. <laughs> yeah, it's like, even if I were to get the best food I've ever eaten, I doubt I would want to eat it for three or four days straight. Yeah, and it just gets worse and worse every day. Yeah, I don't know. It's not <laughs> a good holiday. We have feelings about Thanksgiving. And also, also Christmas, come on. I was going to say, also the name of the holiday is Thanksgiving, and the fact that pretty much no one actually gives anything on that holiday is the most... Silly thing. I don't know, hyp- like hypocritical, crazy holiday that I've ever thought of. I mean, just the history of the holiday is funny. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, like I said. By I, funny, I mean messed up. I'm not going to go on a, like a 20-minute rant, which I easily could about why this holiday is the worst, but, but it is Christmas the worst. is better. Yeah. <laughs> so we are skipping the Christmas in this household. Yes. <laughs> which is funny because then was our anniversary does fall on Thanksgiving. Yeah. It, Whoops, it actually sorry for usually, asking you out on that date. It actually usually does. Last year it did, and we went to his parents' house on our anniversary. Well, luckily we're going to... The not, Netherlands. Not there. <laughs> yeah, instead on our anniversary, we're going to hang out with Alfresco. Shout out Alfresco, one of our mods. And we're going to go to the Anne Frank house. Yeah. Which is a very strange thing to do on an anniversary, but whatever, we're doing it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's going to be no streams for like two-ish weeks. Something like that. I might do an in real life stream when we're there, but I'm not going to plan any because I don't want to get too busy and be like canceling on you guys last second. Yeah. So if we do one, it would probably be like the day before I just post on Discord and I'm like, yo, I'm going to do an in real life stream. And we'll see because I don't, I still need to figure out how our phones are even going to work there if I'm going to have like data. I need to figure something out. It's probably, all the internet. Probably not. I need to figure something because what if we get murdered? Well, what would that? internet save me? What does that have anything to do with having internet? So I could take a picture and WhatsApp my sister and be like, this is the person that killed me. Wow, that's a and very generous. They could generous, come and find me. Very generous murderer. He, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say cheese. All right, this is <laughs> the wrong podcast for that. Oh my gosh, actually, an announcement because I have my podcast, Spooky Shit. Uh, we're taking hiatus. Yeah, so they quit their spooky podcast. Yeah, we're gonna have one more episode come out, but we're like done for now because we're just not focusing on it enough. And it's with telling real people's stories, you can't like do half the work for that like you have to put a lot of effort into it to make it like respectful so yeah, so this is an indicator of what's to come this podcast is going downhill now no i think we're actually Michelle's talking about quit. having like guests on here and stuff potentially and like switching up some stuff so let's know if you guys want to see anything specific yeah but um or would guests be interesting i know everyone does guests yeah everyone has guests i literally like felt so insecure because i was like are we gonna seem like we're copying everyone but then i had to be like that doesn't make any sense every podcast has guests is everyone copying the original podcast maker like yeah fine. probably <laughs> so yeah we'll we'll keep you guys updated on that that might be a little bit we're not we wouldn't even try that till we're back from our trip though and my last thing i told you i had a lot of stuff infinite things i told you uh we have merch now oh okay. yeah see that's a good one right i mean i guess oh oh you guys so we have <laughs> we have a couple things of merch. I have only made so far beanies, hoodies, and mugs. I'm going to make shirts sometime and maybe some more hoodies, but I still need to think about designs. These were just easy. They say things like hashtag F Zora, hashtag F Audemars. Literally almost none of them are family friendly. It's not very friendly. Thing. But we have one that says Meet Merp and Boon Bape. Just stuff like that. And we have like mugs with all of our uh, emotes on them that are pretty cute. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. That's on our Twitch. Exclamation point merch. Go see see if you're interested. We are not sure what we're going to order for our samples yet. But whenever we get it, I will post pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I think that... Oh, one more thing I actually wanted to say. Somebody the other day, I went to the GE when I was reading and just bought something and left. And I saw somebody in the chat said, oh, hey, it's the guy with the podcast. And there saying like, go. hi, and I never said anything. So I have bad handwriting. So I think it's gnomes. Hello, if you listen to the podcast. Gnomes. With an N, though. N-O-M-E-S. E-S. But I have really bad handwriting, so I'm like, uh, I think. Wow, okay. Yeah. Shout out. Hello, I'm sorry I ignored you. Shout out person at the GE. Wait, they actually said again, which means that they said something to me twice and I ignored them twice. Wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> so if that's you, hi, it was me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't ever look at the public chat. I'm wow. sorry, I'm a slacker. Yeah, clearly. People give me grief about doing the raids. They never look at what they're saying. That's so weird. It's such a large part of your interface. Why don't you just turn it off at that point? Because I see when the Ohm's targeting me and stuff. He what? wouldn't get it. He's never rated before. That doesn't make any sense. It does. You don't look at the chat, though. So how can you see when he tells you you're being targeted? I, I look at the chat. I look at the game chat. I don't pay attention to the public chat. Oh, God. He is very critical She's for someone who's never player. rated. Anyway. Okay. How I are mean, you? Uh, 
just to put on record, I stepped foot into raids before Michelle. So, how many kills? Oh, none. Exactly. Okay. Okay. How many carries have you been carried in? Like all of them? No, I'm actually pretty good at it. Be nice. <laughs> now, people always like joke about me being carried, and I'm like, I'm almost at 400 kills. I know what I'm doing. And she's been carried for all of them. Ay, yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. You've I been have doing stuff. Not played any RuneScape in I thought you were saying any games, and now. I was like, you liar. <laughs> No, I've not played RuneScape in a while, though. That's fair. Um, yeah, it's been definitely a long time. I have been thinking about, or I've thought about getting back into it, like, from time to time, but I haven't done it. Like, I don't I'm know. i bit the bullet. Yeah, nothing that they've come out with is really super compelling. I don't know. I mean, also, everything that you're doing, all the games you have been playing, spoiler alert, you're playing with your friends. Yeah, I am playing games <laughs> with my friends. and um, You could play with us, but you don't want to. No, I don't know. RuneScape is, like, not a game that I really think about playing with friends. I don't know if that's like, maybe that's like a problem with the game is it doesn't really make me feel like I want to play with friends. Like I'd rather just play it by myself. That's how I used to feel until I started raiding. And now that I raid, I like playing with people. Yeah. Like that's one of the cool things about like other MMOs, I guess, like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy is like, I feel like those are so much better with friends that I wouldn't play them any other way. Mm -hmm. Whereas RuneScape, I feel the complete opposite. Where, I mean, sure, obviously having like friends to like be like, oh, let's go do you know, whatever boss or, you know, let's go do bandos or something together. Then, I mean, I just don't have anyone like that. And I don't really like, and also the community is like <laughs> crazy toxic sometimes. So I don't even want to go searching for that. I know. Unfortunately, Robert's been jaded and he doesn't want to join any of us from the stream doing stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't. All the, sh all the bad people have like ruined your idea. So you won't even go with us, even though my group's chill. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe if it, there was a younger or a different me, I would be more inclined to like go out there and try to find groups. But I just I keep saying you have a group. I just no. I <laughs> well the thing is like the, there's a difference because like in World of Warcraft, I guess, which is the main experience I have, like people are just always online, always doing stuff because you kind of have to, or at least in the guilds I was in, because they're mm -hmm. like a little more serious. So you're just on all the time. Whereas, like, RuneScape, like, obviously people have work and stuff like that, and, like, they can't just be on, like, always. <laughs> and uh, sometimes they just don't want to play, too, which is fine. But, um, just yeah. Just of them. Then it's like, all right, cool, your friends aren't online, what are you going to do? Just solo content? And then I think that's actually kind of how I ended up doing stuff like that, is, like, slowly less and less people were online, and slowly I was just playing more and more by myself. And so I just became, pref like, a preference to play by myself. I think that... Whenever you do come around to it, we have way more people now that I play with that I know are cool that would like you and that you'd like them. Well, yeah. Or sure. you could just go with our mods who you've like talked to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not saying it's like impossible. A, it's just... You have like a reputation on the stream whenever you just like wave, everyone's like, can Robert show his hand again? You're like mystique. Mystique? You're like mystic. A mist. You're mysterious. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm yeah, trying to say like, mysterious. Mystique is a blue girl from X-Men. You have a mystique about you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. People want to play games with you, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. Me. Yeah. It's me. Okay. I'm people. Yeah. <laughs> Loser. And uh, so, yeah, either way, I think maybe that's one of the things that, like, OSRS is lacking, I guess, is a better way to gather around in, like, communities. I don't know, because, like, Obviously, there's clans, but there's no, like, guild systems like there is in practically every other MMO ever. A lot of people have said we should reactivate our clan and actually do it. Reactivate our clan, but it's so gratuitous inviting people. Because really they a pain. have it in such a, like, poorly implemented way that it's, I mean, like, we haven't done it in a while. They might have updated it at some point. We're forgetting. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I can't even imagine being in any other video game and having to, like, go up and actually right-click invite them to the guild. Like, Rather than just know, typing their username. How ridiculous that concept is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we could reactivate. It's not like it's a big deal. It's just, um, yeah, I could. We have a clan. It's not even, like, inactive. We just don't go on it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think we still have over 100 people in it. We so. do, but the thing is, like, all these people join. I'm pretty sure they made new accounts because there was clans, and yeah, now they yeah. just don't go on. Yeah, because when clans came out, there was a lot of new accounts, and then now we have, like, I think, like, three active people. Yeah. 
They're pretty active though when they are. Yeah. <laughs> I know a few of them don't speak any English, or at least they never have in Guild Chat. There's a couple people. They, but they those speak people like don't really talk anymore. Other languages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah. Overall, I don't know. I don't know how we got so sidetracked, but either way, they should add a, a actual good guild system. I feel like the only reason they added the clan system was a prerequisite to Group Iron Man, and not as as an actual good clan system. Which That's I think is fair. extremely evident in everything else they've done. Mm-hmm. But um, besides that, I have been playing other games that aren't any of these games anyways. What have you been playing? I've just been pretty much playing Overwatch a lot. Two? Um, yeah, Overwatch. Yeah, there's no Overwatch 1, so it's just Overwatch. Oh, there's not? No, because Overwatch 1 was dissolved when Overwatch 2 came out. Wait, really? I didn't know that. That's weird. Yeah, because it's practically the same game. I had no idea. Um, but yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, it's like a online team versus team competitive uh, matchmaking game where it's mostly, it's like heroes versus heroes and they all have like different abilities and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. And it's uh, it's pretty cool. I've just been playing a lot of that with friends. Like Michelle said, that's mainly why I've been playing it is because my friends play and also it's also kind of fun to um, like get ranked and see how like high rank you can get. So currently in like gold one, which I think is like okay i guess i don't know it goes all the way up to like platinum and then diamond maybe diamond question mark who knows <laughs> uh grandmasters at the top i don't know that's not even a jewel or yeah, a medal not... <laughs> <laughs> they, they just, just switch it up they just superseded all the gems in the game but um <laughs> yeah pretty fun game i'd recommend it it's free that's why i'd recommend it oh heck yeah i didn't know it's free reason. that's yeah. dope also i'd highly recommend turning off all chats in the game because people can be toxic Same just like in escape. every game yeah that's why i ignore public chat oh that's why yes 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 okay but um yeah have not been doing pretty much anything else i have oh i actually recently started playing a little bit of minecraft oh yeah i didn't even see you playing minecraft yeah i played a little bit i had a friend restart the server that we play on oh that's dope and uh, i have started building a house in the bamboo forest. <laughs> Cute. And there's also a bunch of baby pandas that are just rolling around eating bamboo. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. That's cute. Yeah, uh, that's a really fun game. I've been playing since forever. Minecraft? Yeah. Yeah, it's been recommended to me a lot. I mean, you have it, don't you? No. I actually, that was on my old computer. I didn't end up downloading it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need to download I downloaded Fortnite for Jenna, but I don't know when I'm going to play that. Fortnite. Everyone, okay, so this is the good and bad thing of having a st- public Steam wish list and just being too nice. Uh, I agree to download, like, every game people tell me about, and when people give me stuff, I have, like, I'm, like, overwhelmed with games I'm supposed to play now. Yeah. It's, like, nice that people give me gifts, but at the same time, I'm, like, I don't even have time to play all these games to catch up. Well, if you just beat them faster, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. I had to make plans with Jimmy to play Here's a Hammer Watch on a Saturday in January. Okay. Or was it December? I don't know. A Saturday very far away from a now. A Saturday next May. We literally were going through our planners to figure it out. Because I was like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to play this game. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. Either way, um, yeah. Played a little bit of Minecraft. Mostly Overwatch. But um, that's about it. I did have like, uh, like a brief moment where I really wanted to play like another MMO for a little bit. But I decided not to. Like World of Warcraft or something, but oh. I, I just don't have enough time for that. That's true. It must take a lot of time. Yeah. It's also one of those things where I, it's, like, really hard for me to play MMOs casually because I just want to play them and then, like, be really good at them. Exactly. But uh, obviously, I don't have the time. So, rest in that's peace. That's why story games are better. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, that's pretty much it for my updates. Not yeah. too much going on there, like always, but we can jump into actual RuneScape stuff. I think we have gone on for long enough about everything else. Are we sure? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've been watching The Great British Bake Off. So, Love that show. Uh, yeah, Love if you, it. If you watch Netflix, then uh, check that out. It's a pretty good show. But either way, let's hop into the Q&A for this week. This is the mod Q&A, which did happen on uh, Halloween of all days. Halloween. But it did not get posted as a blog until the 7th, so just a couple a days ago. A full week. Yeah, they, wow. they usually wait a while to put it on I didn't know it was YouTube. a full week. Yeah. So this one is... Um, pretty much all in regards to polls as well as the changes to the fang. Perfect. So, um, the perfect, I mean, sad. This is, I think, this was kind of a bigger Q and A for them because I kind of feel that way whenever they only have two people on, 
it's kind of more of a uh it's more serious a more seems. serious one because when they only have Madaiza and Mod Kirin, which are two of the older community leaders, essentially, uh, I always kind of feel like they're a little bit more serious and kind of like it's definitely not just for fun Q and A. Yeah, like they don't have like Mod Light coming on and like doing random community things or you know Mod Marcos introducing himself or whatever. It's just yeah, like this all... is a serious Q and A. Yeah, it kind of just seems like it's all business. But either way, some interesting stuff here. Some really. Um, important things, I guess. So, I again, I'm not going to be reading everything, just a few points that I thought were kind of interesting. Yes. And so if you want to check out the full thing, you can either watch it or they do have a transcript there with all the questions asked. Um, also, this is not a... Um, this, is, this is not actual patch notes or anything. This is just their... Um, they have a disclaimer saying that this is just a glimpse into their ongoing process. Yeah, it's like a transcript from a live stream. It's definitely not an official thing yeah. by any means. Yeah. So the number one thing, which I think is probably, I mean, I don't, I'd probably argue to say the number one talk of RuneScape for the past week talk or two town. was um, obviously, obviously Uzmumpton's Fang. What? So Maraiza said, for those who don't know, a hotfix went out today that changes it. So outside the tomb of a mascot, the Fang will now reroll the on, or reroll only the player's accuracy and not the monster's defense, like it was doing mm -hmm. before. However, whilst you're inside the tomb, the previous behavior of it rolling your accuracy as well as the monster's defense uh, will work as it did before. So it's only nerfed outside of the raid. It is, yes. It is only nerfed outside of the raid. Uh, so it essentially works as it did before um, the change whilst you're inside Tomb of Mask. It outside it has a slight change which has effectively reduced its overall DPS and is, as it is less accurate than before. So it has been nerfed the way everyone thought um, it was going to be nerfed, uh, like because they said it was going to be, <laughs> and uh, but not in the raid. So I guess that's nice if people you know bought it just for the raid, then they will be unaffected. But if you bought it because you wanted to melee Vorkath faster, then Whoops. you are SOL, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but question number one, I think, is a really good question because. This is probably one of the number one things that I saw over the weeks, which is players have pointed out that the Fang's accuracy calculation was never bugged, and it worked exactly the way it was pulled. Hmm. Why did we change it now? So this is something that even I reiterated on the podcast here, saying that a lot of people said that it was not bugged um, and that it was working the way that it was. Um, so obviously they had it the way it was intended, and then everyone thought it was going to be too weak, so they buffed it. And then... It was too strong, so they nerfed it. And so, yeah, it was too <laughs> strong, and then they nerfed it. But the way they had it buffed, everyone thought that's the way it was supposed to work and that it was never bugged. And so that's what, um, obviously, this question is relating to. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mon Kieran is essentially saying that there's two issues here. So one was that... Um, there was a lack of communication and confusion. The second is also how powerful should the Fang be? Um, I think we said on here, or at least I said on here out loud, that I think that it should get nerfed. Oh, I said I think it should be best installed everywhere because I already own it. Oh, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, and also Mon Kieran does go in here and say that um, essentially for the second part is how powerful it should it be. They didn't want it to be as powerful as it was because obviously you really only want one like GG item from every raid, mm -hmm. which we already have the staff. Obviously, is going to be the staff. That's why it costs one point three billion GP and why it is the rarest item that you can get from raid, uh, from TOA. Yes, and they only really want one because that's how it's been. So obviously, chambers, you have. Um, the Tebow, which is also still 1.2 to 1.3 bill, um, even after so many years. And then obviously the scythe from... Um, tombs. Of, or not tombs, but like theater raid. blood. Yeah, from theater blood raids too. So. I just think it's funny that everyone's like complaining about the staff going down in price. They're like, it's not even going to be worth a bill in a couple of years. And I'm like, the scythe's not worth a bill. The scythe was like 500 mil at most. No, the scythe when it came out was just like everything else. Max no, I mean cash. recently before Toa came out, it was like five hundred mil. Uh, yeah, it didn't stand but up I mean, how the Tebow even, did. It didn't stand up how the Tebow did. But that being said, it was still up until like 
Yeah, like even earlier this year, it was like 800 mil. Oh, okay. So it was still very, very expensive. It wasn't until like the middle of summer that I started wanting it. Yeah, it started <laughs> to become less and less expensive the more and more people were like playing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know the real reason why it dropped in price so much. I think it went up a lot when there was a lot of people playing during the pandemic because obviously more people were buying it, so it was becoming more rare. Mm-hmm. But as less people were needing it, it became less expensive. And they got rid of the cheat clients, so people didn't play Tob anymore. Uh, yeah, that's also <laughs> also a big thing. So maybe that increased the price of it. Because it was down to, I think, like 500 mil at one point. Or like, 500 mil is whenever I want to start it, started wanting it. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, either way, that is the GG item that comes from uh, TOB. It is still such an insane item. But... um. Again, that game that's already been out for many, many months, uh, years, and um, it is still a pretty good price. I mean, six hundred yeah. mil is definitely no. You I mean, know, I still own it. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> definitely still no small amount, and so that's what they're worried about. Is um, well, not necessarily here in this question, but that is something they were worried about is the general drop rates of things. But that's a different question. We'll get to it. Either way, though. Um, it seems like they wanted to nerf how often you get the fang, obviously the drop rate, but they can't really do that because like they, like Mon Kieran said previously, everyone's already gotten so many of these items. Yeah. So there's already so many in the game and two, it'd be really messed up for everyone that farmed the fang to have gotten it on such a low drop rate. And then if they like quadrupled the, the like how rare it is, then it's like everyone else that now needs it. For it's collection just, log or something. Yeah, they're just like super down bad, like on mm-hmm. their luck. Cause it would take them, they haven't gotten it at this point. It's gonna take them four times longer than it would just be a real slap in the face to that. I feel like a good thing to do is do what they were doing with other weapons, which is make it for a little bit. So whenever you sell it, RuneScape buys it and they delete it from the game. I mean, I think they probably will do that, but even so, it's not like a fast process. Well, yeah, but it's something. Yeah, no, for sure. But either way, they were saying that they didn't want the weapon to be as good as it is because he even says here that um, there was less need to do all the other bits of content in the game. You could just go to TOA straight away, get your fang, and you're basically set for 90% of the content. That couldn't be left as it was. And obviously, they realized 90% is obviously probably hyperbole and a little bit of an (laughs) over-exaggeration, but it suffices to say... 105%. That it is um, pretty good. And uh, we had to be strict because we care about the future of the game, the future of PVM content that we're going to launch, and the future of reward space for future PVM content as well. So uh, we need to get it in the right spot. Yeah, it's fair. So, I mean, that's a really easy thing to understand because obviously if they just keep making the new all the items from the new raid the best, then you'll have the World of Warcraft problem where only only the newest content is good and all the old content is bad. Mm-hmm. So they want to obviously avoid that. Yeah, that it makes sense. Yeah. And then going back to the first issue, which was communication and confusion, uh, to that, they say that there have been a lot of versions of the Fang. From the original blogs to what it ended up being. Yeah, remember it was supposed to be curved, a curved stab weapon? Yeah, it was supposed to be like a traditional like Egyptian curved sword. but That would stab. That was ridiculous. <laughs> um, as much as we might have a mess up in terms of communication, what we've said and how it has been interpreted, we should try and set the record straight. But the fan cannot be left as strong as it was. At the end of the day, I believe there's two perspectives. If you're on a main account, the item was sitting not, o- not far over 100 mil. I think it's around 90 mil now. Yeah, it's gone down a bit. It's not intended to be the scythe or the Tebow of TOA. That position is taken by the shadow, and that's where we want the shadow to be. We want the fang to be good, not incredible. It shouldn't be useless, and its only use shouldn't be TOA. Um, Obviously, he says he realized that's ambiguous, but we want it to have some utility. In fact, uh, what we said in the blog was that we expected to have it good at a few places, but not many. We um, obviously they didn't want it to be so good that it was, you know, overcoming the Dragon Hunter Lance on Dragons, which I sold to buy it, which is, you know, insane. Um, I saw someone flipping uh, Dragon Hunter Lances when they were at 36 mil. They Mm -hmm. bought like 28 of them and resold them for uh, a 200 mil profit because it's still 
the best in slot. Like, I don't think anyone should have realistically thought that it was going to be not the best in slot melee at Dragons forever. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even think it technically was that much better at, like, Ullman stuff. It was just uh, a lot of people were selling it just because it made sense financially at the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, at the time it made sense. But for anyone that was just like, all right, cool, I'll never have to buy a Dragon Hunter Lance ever I again. I knew I'd have to buy another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, either way, they don't go too far into like what they meant about miscommunication. Like maybe they should have just been more forthright and saying like, uh, regardless of whether this was a bug or not, it needs to change <laughs> instead of saying that it was a bug. Yeah. I mean, whether it was or wasn't, I don't think it doesn't really matter. But um, I think they just should have been a little bit more clear with that, is what they're, <laughs> what they're kind of saying. Yes. And then Mod Aiza does finish off by saying something that I think I even reiterated on here. But he does say that it is better to get uh, some of these things out of the way in reference to nerfs or bad news rather than to leave them ongoing for a long time. And he wants to remind everyone of how well the blowpipe incident went because obviously that was a really difficult thing to go through because it was busted for four years. Yeah. And we didn't want that to happen again. So, um, yeah. Obviously, it was a tough thing to do, but they had to, unfortunately, nerf it. And that was kind of their reasoning behind it, which, I mean, does make sense. I would like to point out, with the blowpipe, everyone was so scared. I finally did fight caves before they nerfed it because everyone was freaking me out. I've not noticed really the difference. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that if you really pay attention, it's noticeable. But in general, it's not going to change your life. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, the next question I thought was kind of, you know, I think some people would you know, question this is why didn't they just change how the special effect worked or, you know, the accuracy special special that it has. And essentially they're saying like, we, you couldn't do that. Like that would essentially be like changing all the monsters in the game, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, they're, and they already pulled for us to make it the specific things that it does. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Mariza says, like we said, uh, it's never an easy thing to have to consider, but I think in time, it will hopefully all make sense, especially as we now have the option for higher defense monsters for it to ex excel in and be uh, and be a little bit further down the line. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that maybe they'll come. This will allow them to come up with better content down the line that'll be more specialized towards the Fang, because obviously, like they said, they really only want the Fang to be good at um, high defense enemies. Yeah, not everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't, shouldn't be the new rapier for mm -hmm. all intents and purposes. And so for the next question, it's actually going to be about voting. And mm. I thought this one was kind of interesting because it's kind of important if you do vote and it's about restricted voting. So obviously they've tried to do stuff with PVP restricted voting in the past. And essentially they're saying that they don't really want to do stuff like that anymore because it's really hard to qualify it. So I remember some of the PKing stuff. People were like, I PK and I'm not even qualified for this. Yeah, exactly. So they really want to restrict, do, do restricted voting and reserve it specifically for things that are very easy to qualify, such as the most recent one where they did stuff that was specifically restricted to UIMs mm -hmm. because obviously it really only matters in, you know, the bigger picture if you can store stuff in the wardrobe for UIMs. Yeah. Um, because obviously they don't have banks. So, um, yeah. So for things like that or for things that are strictly related to Iron Man stuff, then they will be doing restricted polling for those types of things. But they don't really want to do it for PVPing or PKing because like we said and like they said, it's really hard to qualify it. Like one, it's hard to track whether someone has or hasn't qualified, whether they have pk'd for x amount of time or I mean, how do you even tell like somebody could be really into pvp and never actually gotten a kill <laughs> yeah they're just not a good pk -er and they wouldn't count yeah and they um mod karen also ends off by saying we've also seen how we can get pvp content to pass through a poll without the need for it to being restricted uh via obviously the wilderness boss rework rewards so yeah because all of that stuff passed and so yeah they don't really want to do that anymore for pvp and they don't plan on doing it for PvP in the future. Honestly, um, it makes sense. Yeah, it, it's just it doesn't seem like a good idea. It Too didn't go hard to figure out. It really didn't go well whenever they tried to do that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the next question is about the uh, polling charter. So for anyone that, that doesn't know, they pretty much laid out what they will and won't be polling um, going into the future. And so people are worried, or some people are worried, I guess, that this is just an excuse to add content without it being polled under the guise of game integrity changes. Which, to be fair, we think they should do that sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, but Mon Kieran does address this and say that um, this isn't true. And it's not the goal. The goal in the terms of the charter is to make it clear to the community what we pull and what we don't. We're making tweaks at the same time. But previously, it was so ambiguous what gets pulled and what doesn't. And I totally agree. It just seemed like random things didn't get pulled rent sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and we had the notion of game integrity. And that's the only reason we didn't pull things. Uh, we've never said explicitly, this is what we pull and this is what we don't. I think the biggest valuable thing out of this is that the community can... Uh, can point to the chart and say, hey, you said normally you'd pull this sort of thing and you didn't or you know, vice versa. And they do say that there are certain things they will be pulling even if it wasn't included in the poll charter. So, you know, big design things mm -hmm. that they said they probably wouldn't put into the charter. They did say that they would here in this blog um, or in this podcast. So, yeah, so so bigger things that will have bigger impacts, even if it was specified as not being pulled, if it's a big enough change and big enough impact, they will pull it anyways. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, because obviously that will kind of matter to people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, and also they do say that that kind of, it's not like a concrete thing. It just is kind of laying like the foundation again to like say you, you should have pulled this because it was in the charter then they can go back and actually have that for reference, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I think in the end, it's it's a better thing than just, like they said, having it really ambiguous and not knowing whether something should or shouldn't have been pulled. Yeah, they have like clear cut rules now. <laughs> yeah, or at least some, side, some sort kind of guideline. Of. Yeah. And then it's funny because this next question is talking about the most recent poll and it's talking, or not just that, but the stuff we went over the other week about uh, revisiting stuff that failed by a small margin. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, some of the There's stuff we lot. went over failed by like 0.4%. It's ridiculous. Which is like, I don't know, 100 votes or something. And um, Madahiza does say, obviously, this is a response to the fact that we're going from 75 to 70%. And I think there's 20 or 30 polls that have failed in that time. And it's hilarious because the poll that just happened uh, for the prayer buttons in the wilderness actually... The special attack. Yeah, the special attack actually did fail by a very small amount. So I think it's really funny. Yeah, and, if you um, didn't know, that one is so you could use your special attack orb rather than having to go to your combat page to use it. Yeah. Which, by the way, I was doing Chaos Elemental last night, and for some reason I thought it passed, and I went to click no. it, and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Mara even says here, that poll closed the day that we released the polling chart. So I sat there thinking, this is going to look so awkward when three hours after the poll closes, my blog is going out, and we're talking about reducing the pass rate. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Like, why didn't they do this earlier? But Yeah, but he does say that we stayed true to the whole polling as it was then, and it did fail, so we would need to repoll it. I think it would make absolute sense to repoll it, and I do not doubt in my mind that it would pass going forward. For that one in particular, I saw comments of people feeling like it had failed because it would make PvP easier because they'll be able to spec faster than they currently. And that's just not the case. And I agree, that's not the case. For people that... Yeah, people are already on autopilot. They're not going to switch the way they do it. Yeah, if you watch a PK, they don't ever look or touch their top right corner of their, of their screen. Like, that's just not something yeah. that happens. Like, people learning will switch, but PKers that are PKing you currently probably already set in their ways with that. Yeah, and it's so much faster to switch to your spec weapon and then, you know, press one on the F keys and then click spec than to switch to your spec weapon, move your mouse all the way to the top mm -hmm. right of your of their screen, and then click that. It's yeah. like, I mean, if you have a really small screen, it's not that much real estate moving your mouse that far, but... Like, I'm used to that, <laughs> and still, I prefer that, but there's no way that's faster. Yeah, it still takes some time, so there's no way that it's a better idea. And this one is kind of a interesting uh, question that I thought I kind of wanted to ask you, because or, like, just other people in general. Okay. Because I think it's kind of an interesting question or a good one, and they say, is there any plans to increase the voting requirements? Not and uh, Mod Karen just says, not that I know of. Largely, the requirements are there to stop people cheating and botting 
So that's really it. You can't just see a poll and think, I really want to say, I really want to say on that, then make an account, get the requirements in the time the poll is live, and then mass vote on it. So that's the basic requirements there. We're not planning to change them. If we have any reason to add a feature, obviously, it's not set in stone. These are things that can be discussed, though. I think it's fine the way it is. I don't know what extra requirements you put in, though. Yeah. Like, do you ever think there should be, like, level requirements for, like, new new raid, like, votes? Like Honestly, no, because it's something that the people get to eventually. Yeah. I think you should be able to vote on anything that could even potentially affect you in the future. Yeah, I yeah. agree. But, and it's not like that many people even vote, so. <laughs> exactly. That kind of leads me into the next question that I also thought was a good one. And currently, only about 6% of the player base actually votes. Of 6% of active players actually vote. Um, perhaps by adding an incentive to voting, this would make it more mm. accessible. Free and, ice cream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, free Just ice like cream. real life. Uh, Mata Isa does say that I saw one example of someone suggesting that there should be a 1 out of 5,000 chance after submitting a poll that you get a poll booth pet. <laughs> but, okay, uh, first you... off, I'm, do I'm down for a poll booth pet. Don't make it one out of 5,000 because I can never get my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many polls would you have you to do? You cannot make it that rare. 5,000 polls there's and probably, if you go dry on it? There's probably not that many polls in the game. I don't not think that there's... Close. Yeah, I, it would have to be like one out of a few hundred realistically. Yeah, <laughs> you probably wouldn't have the pet even if you voted every single day. Every single day for the rest of your life. You still yeah. never get this pet if you're going dry. Yeah, probably. But what do you think about the incentives? I know a lot I think it's of, a good idea. There's a lot of like memes and also people, I guess, probably realistically to some point, um, like saying that you should get like lamps or something. XP lamps are good. I was thinking um, could like give you a day extra in your membership or something. A, a day extra of membership? I want to say a bond, but I know that you'll be like, oh, that's too much. No, <laughs> I don't really care but i also don't think they would ever go for that because that would eat into their investors yeah so a day extra membership i like the xp lamps though yeah and i do like a pool booth pet as long as it's not one out of five thousand because that's that's like similar to the um the jar of darkness yeah. vibes yeah. <laughs> it's like no one's ever gonna get that i think yeah maybe they should do both i think like mm. maybe a one out of one thousand pet because that's still very rare and then um, I think one out of five hundred. There's not been that many pulls since we started playing. I know. There's probably been a thousand though. Over like twenty years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Your yeah. drop rate shouldn't mean that you'll if you beat the rate, you'll get it in twenty years. But it has to be a reason for you to you know like I would an say incentive. like five hundred. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Because obviously, that's still like it, low key way too hard. Obviously but. one out of five thousand is too crazy, but yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, be real guys I think maybe they should do both like maybe like uh, depending on your total level it'll be a lamp like if you have over I don't know what's a good amount like 10 million XP then it'll be like a 10k lamp which yeah. is I think that's a significant amount I think a lot, of people, a lot of people would do it for that and then like you know uh, under 1 mil you'll get like I don't know like a thousand XP like I think they I feel scale like that's it. It's kind reasonable. of like how they scale it with Genie. The more XP you have, the higher it is. Yeah, but I do feel like Genie is way too low. Genie's like really low. Because <laughs> I think at level one, it gives you like practically no experience. It's like it's 100 like five. or something like no, that. No, it's less than 100. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah, so I think it should be more than Genie. It should be like 1,000, 10,000, and then like 100,000. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then that way, if they did do something like a pole booth pet at the same time, even after you get the pet, you have more incentive to keep voting. Yeah, because you'd be like, cool, I got a lamp. And then you're like, there will actually be a hype moment where you're like, oh, dang, I actually got the pet. That's crazy. And then, you you know. Yeah, reason to keep going back. That would suck for anyone that's, you know, a pet hunter because there's no way to farm it, obviously. That's what I'm saying. It has to be like I think maybe they would. Rare. I think it would be off collection log. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because that would just be too ridiculous. Mm -hmm. but, but, um. Yeah, I don't know. I think adding both would be cool. I like that. Yeah. I don't know. Let yeah, us I'm know. always down for new pets. Yeah, let us know if there's any other ideas for incentives. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think the mods in general weren't super hyped on the idea of incentives to get people to join because I think they wanted them to join out of like actual interest or concern and not just for the fact that they could get and like rewards i mean obviously that's ideal but that's just like real life voting so most people need other incentives they're just otherwise they're like why bother 
Yeah. <laughs> That's why in real life, like, if you get the I voted stickers, you can get, like, free ice cream and stuff places. Yeah, I mean, I would be slightly more inclined to do it if there was incentive. I mean, I'm more involved in RuneScape, and I still don't vote on every... I probably vote on half of the I ones. I think I've been trying to vote more frequently. So, Sometimes I forget. Yeah, but I mean, that even goes to show, even someone that's more invested in the game still doesn't 100% <laughs> yeah, literally. always just go out and like vote immediately or whatever. Right. So, yeah, I think it would have to be a worthwhile incentive like XP lamps or something like that. Yeah, I agree. XP and a pet. And a pet. And also a T-Bow every time you vote. The pet is an I voted sticker. <laughs> Oh, that'd be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how they'd have a sticker. Or they could have just a cute animal to sticker on it. I don't know. Yeah. I think maybe it would be like a special pet that had like a like a voted cape on it or something. Because I feel like <laughs> just a walking pole booth would be like so RS3 lame. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that's about it for the mod Q&A that I wanted to go over. They did go over a bunch of other stuff about polling specifically. But I didn't really feel like reading through the mountains of. It wasn't like significant enough. Yeah, it was. There was a ton of words on the screen, and <laughs> I just didn't want to go over all of it. So yeah, all good. if you want to get all of their thoughts on that, then you can check it out. But you I only got to hear what Rob thinks is important enough. Yeah, which could be <laughs> really nothing. But either way, I liked it. we're gonna roll into the actual update for this week. Yes. So this week's update is the diversity and inclusion changes in the quest speedrunning update. Yeah, and this did come out on November 9th, which is today. Yeah, last night for me. Yeah. So starting out with the diversity and inclusion changes. If you're an avid fashion scaper, enjoy romancing royals, or love a good quest, we've got a few changes this week guaranteed to make you happy. First up, changing anything about your base character model is now completely free with no limitation. Cool. <laughs> it's so weird that you couldn't do that before. Yeah, I mean, it costs money, but... Yeah, it's. I think that the main thing we're going to be saying this entire thing is like, oh, weird that you couldn't do that before. <laughs> yeah. Also, I think some of this stuff they talked about earlier this year. I think like a few months ago because it does. some of it does sound familiar for no, sure. No, they definitely talked about this before. I don't know why it took them so long to introduce. Yeah. They talked about it during the Pride event, so that was June. Well, I think, I think they... I think it makes sense because they did have to rework a lot of quests as we'll talk about. I do think it's... I don't know why they even like told us about before though. Yeah. Well, well, maybe to get I mean, people hype who are like, I mean, I'm sure, honestly, there were so many people like being like homophobic and stuff after the private event. There's probably people who wanted to quit the game. Yeah, so maybe. it was a little bit of reassurance, like, hey, we're trying. <laughs> yeah, maybe. A little, a little bit late, but barely than never, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so this means we've got freebies afoot, which is a little shoe joke for you there. Uh, Isra's shoe shop in Relica, Thessala's shop in Varrock, Thessalia's shop in Varrock, the hairdressers in Falador, and the makeover mage. That's Aaliyah's shop is one of the best money makers for free to play. Nice. Okay, good to know. Now they've got those fancy new duds. Why not walk them over to Miscellanea, where the dating scene has recently been revived? The dating scene is two members of one family. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is the most poppin' dating scene in all of uh, RuneScape. It's the so. only dating scene. There you go. So the following changes have been made to the Throne of Miscellanea and Royal Trouble quest. You may not choose to romance either the handsome Prince Brand or the beautiful Princess Astrid, regardless of your character's gender. If you didn't know, they forced you to be straight previously, which yeah. <laughs> sucked. I wanted to marry Astrid. Or if you're not looking for long-term commitment, you cannot choose to become your selected royal's best friend instead of marrying them, which I think I'd actually switch to that if I can. Well, yeah. Because I don't want to be locked down. You it know? doesn't matter now. I don't want to be like locked down. Like I want to keep my options open. Okay, we get yeah. it. I don't want to be locked down. Yeah. Anyway. Speaking of quests, the gender requirement during requir recruitment drive has been removed and replaced with a new puzzle, which will test your powers observation. In addition, you'll receive a cool 3,000 gold for completing the quest. You didn't know you had to change to become a woman in that quest. Yeah. I mean, that's weird. That's literally the only reason I would always make uh, girl characters in this game. A lot of people like will make women characters for this quest. It's become such a thing that now people see me like as a woman character and are like, oh, like calling me like dude and sir and stuff and a man. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. But OK. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because it's not weird in this game, but in like every other game, I usually am also a girl because I like, cuter. I like the female models more. In, in this game, they're so games. low detail. That doesn't matter. In this one, it's not for the looks at all. It's because it makes questing easier. Mm hmm. Also, um, they should just have like a no gender option, honestly. It's kind of... A no gender option, yeah. Yeah, just be like other. <laughs> but anyway, 
You'll also notice that anyone can join any consortium company except accepting the red axe regardless of which gender they present as i didn't know that you couldn't there's two uh groups that you cannot join this is in like the dwarven area yeah yeah, yeah. i don't remember the name of the quest but yeah there's one that you can only join if you're a guy one you can only join if you're a girl oh okay i didn't know that it's strange <laughs> any references to the company's previous gender discrimination have been removed from the quest cool so they're not even recognizing their issues from the past they're just pretending it didn't happen yeah they're gaslighting us Following completion of the feud, all NPCs in the town of Hold of Niche will revert to their usual names instead of going by Ollie. Yeah, this was that definitely... That was a weird one. This is definitely one of the weirdest quests that took them so long to fix. I think this is, like, so oddly and not unnecessarily racist. It's like every brown person in this area has the same name. Yeah. It's like, uh... I'm like, sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, obviously, Muhammad is the most common name in the world, but... That is, it's, so, it's well, up there. such a ridiculous thing to think that it's like, oh, yeah, let's just name everyone in this town John or everyone in this town, like, Vlad or whatever. It's, it's yeah. just, like, such a ridiculous concept. Yeah. I don't know why they'd go through with it even so many years ago. I would love to see who came up with this idea. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you can learn more by speaking assistance during and after the quest. I do think it's funny that they still lock it behind a quest because a lot of people <laughs> now will have to finish a quest. Otherwise, they'll still have the same name. Yeah. If you've got the itch for something more mischievous, both male and female hand members can now be pickpocketed at level 15 thieving, granting 22.2 XP per successful pickpocket. Yeah, before it was only women. Yep, men were harder to steal from. Yes, they were. gave more XP. Yeah, they were. <laughs> it's honestly so funny because I'm like, what? who came up with all this? I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's a really weird What? Thing. Uh, and the skill guide and level messages have been updated to go along with that. I didn't know this was a thing, but to coincide with the above change, Barbarian Village inhabitants of any gender can now drop clue keys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming it was only, like, men who could drop them before. I think so. The women weren't even qualified enough to hold clue keys. Yeah. King World has finally heard the long-lasting complaints from the Varrock guards and has now supplied them with armor just like their counterparts in other cities. We're sure this will stop them from being murdered in mass for clue scrolls. A lot of people were sad because obviously the the Varrock Nostalgia guards vibes. looked like uh you know big yellow bananas and now they won't probably because they have armor. I didn't I read this last night. I was reading it before the update happened, and then I was waiting in Varrock like during the update, and I didn't realize that they weren't wearing armor, they're just wearing like yellow clothes. Yeah, they're, they're just yeah, they're just wearing yellow tabards. I'm like, what kind of guards were these? Yeah, and so a lot of people were sad about that. Hopefully they just give them armor and uh, a lot of them are just wearing the same thing but chainmail now. Yeah, I was hoping that maybe they would make the chainmail look yellow as well. So that they can uh, I still be bananas. I think it was yellow. I never realized people <laughs> thought they looked like bananas. They did, though. Yeah. But it's not wrong. Lastly, citizen models across Gilna are now more diverse. You'll notice a greater variety of farmers, warriors, guards, paladins, heroes, knights, tribespeople, and regular folks. Where I first initially noticed this was at the guards in Varrock because all the guards are wearing chainmail now, except for the new female guards who are wearing cropped chainmail. Oh, that's cool. I thought it was funny. I'm like, yeah, what, women? But you got to show up that midriff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's, it's A okay. Step in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> I did think it was, I actually like laughed out loud when I saw it. I was like, no way they're all wearing crop tops. Yeah. <laughs> Hope no one tries to stab them in the stomach. Anyway, we're still working on more diversity and inclusion changes, but we're not quite ready to talk about them just yet. So keep your eyes, keep your ears on the ground on that one. Keep your eyes on the ground, everyone. Just stare at the floor. <laughs> stare at the floor and the update will be here soon. <laughs> all right, moving on from that to quest speed running updates. So good news, speedrunners. We're adding Prince Ali Rescue and Beneath Curse Sands to the quest speedrunning roster. This also means that you'll now be able to rack up the points required to purchase formerly unobtainable tier three speedrunning outfit, which looks so good. And this is the one that you can combine to be graceful. Yes, it is. The graceful looks awesome. I want it so bad. I regret buying the tier one speedrunning outfit because now I probably don't have enough points. Yeah, you look like a fool. Yep. So uh, they just go over the requirements and I'm not going to go over all the requirements, but I'll let you guys know like the... Platinum time that you need for the most points at Prince Ali is 11 minutes. And for Beneath Curse Sands, the platinum time is 28 minutes. I did that one without Quest Guide. It took me like two hours. Yeah, that one, that, that's a very, <laughs> that's a very fast time. Yeah, the bronze, to be fair, for Prince Ali is 17 and Beneath Curse Sands is 52, which is more up my alley for that. Yeah. <laughs> We're also launching betas for two further quests, A Taste of Hope and Sins of the Father. I do not want to do that quest ever again in my life. Yeah. Oh, my God. So you can give us your feedback before those launch in December. 
You won't need to jump into any beta worlds this time. You'll be able to test them from any regular quest speedrunning world. Remember, though, that these beta quests will not give you trophies or set best times. You know what's sad mm -hmm. is I'm almost certain that they are not opening beta worlds for the quests because there will not be any financial reason to do so. Yeah, I was kind of sad seeing it last time. It made me feel sad. Yeah. It just made me like, oh, I wish more people were there. <laughs> if I had to guess, there was less than 100 people maximum at any one time on oh, yeah. the servers. I honestly think less than 50. Well, I think <laughs> I think in beta there was more. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, since the release, definitely less than 100. Yikes. So for A Taste of Hope, the bronze will be 56 minutes and the platinum will be 32 for Sins of the Father, bronze will be 90 minutes. This is such a long quest. Platinum is 54. Yeah. Almost an hour speed running. Yeah. That's I mean, awful. That's not that bad. But I How mean. How many times do you think people are just going to restart like 45 minutes into this? You don't know speed runners. There's people that speed run. It. There's people that speed run eight hour games. I hate it. Oh my God. I'm so not into speed running. It's crazy. <laughs> We've also made the following changes to speedrunning worlds. So ammo dropped when fired now only appears to the person who fired it. Lit fires now last a consistent amount of time before going out. Ash left behind by fires now only appears to the person who lit the fire. Poison, venom, and disease effects are now currently wiped when starting or ending a speedrun. We're also aware of an issue where items that drop because the inventory overflows, for example, when you're given an item but you already full inventory, are not correctly deleted when starting or ending a speedrun. Oh, that's like a sneaky way to keep some stuff i mean i think all of these ways are really easy ways to exploit things oh yeah i mean the ammo thing is pretty easy you could just have a friend like shoot well your million... iron so you can't pick them up um is there... i mean maybe that could have been part of the mistake that you could pick them up yeah i was like are you sure i don't yeah. know i mean i don't know well obviously. you weren't supposed to <laughs> yeah exactly i think all these were just like exploits we expect to have a global fix for this issue released later this month. In the meantime, we'll manually fix particularly bad instances of this problem. And where needed, best times will be reset to ensure times don't become unobtainable. <laughs> also, as an added extra, quest speed drawing trophies have been made lighter without using cheaper metals. Wow. Wow, so you can still run around with them. As always, we'd love to hear what you think of the requirements, starting items, and any other feedback you may have. It's funny because I think all they did was actually make them lighter in like your player book so that you aren't penalized when you run with them that's exactly that yeah so you could run around better yeah <laughs> finally a quick heads up we'll have a new competition for all you fast-footed folk starting on november 16th so get practicing our time-saving techniques and prince ellie rescue beneath her sands that's cool hopefully that brings more people into the I, yeah i mean i want to do it for the outfit I don't know when I'll do it, but I plan on doing it at some point. Yeah, you'll probably have to wait until the next I'm waiting until more easy quests are added. I don't want to do Beneath for Sins. <laughs> or Sins is the next one, too. Oh, Sins is no. Sins is just, like, not even on my radar. That's not going to happen. Yeah, imagine spending 90 minutes and still getting bronze or not getting bronze. I'm going to wait till they add more. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of quests, we've made a couple quality of life changes to rat catchers. There you go. Yay! The rats will absolutely hate this announcement, but we've made it easier for cats to catch them. You know, I missed this part whenever I was reading the notes earlier. I know. You must have. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they. it's funny you actually mentioned rat I, I totally missed them. Cats will now run away when they reach one hit point in their fight against the king rat rather than valiantly fighting to the death. Now your furry friend can accompany you until you're ready to exchange for death runes as nature intended. Love that. Hated that I'd be like, not. I'd look away for a second. All of a sudden my cow just die. And then you got to wait 30 minutes again or two hours. Two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, the guards in the mansion segment of the quest haven't had a pay raise for a while and have become lax in their duties. They should be a bit easier to anticipate and you'll no longer get caught between awkward rotations while conducting your sneaky business. Oh, this is when nice. you have to sneak past without them seeing you and you would have to hop worlds sometimes. I wonder if they're doing this because they're going to add it to speedrunning or something. Because True, and it wouldn't make sense if you have to hop speedrunning worlds to do it. Everyone's already done this quest, so it's such a weird thing to go back and do. I mean, yeah, and people who are doing it for the first time, like it's so annoying. I'm... I envy everyone who doesn't have to deal with it. Yeah. But also, I'm glad they did it. For There's some Tombs of a Mask of Things. As we discussed last week, we've made some adjustments to the thing. If you missed it, the big change is that the weapon now rolls your accuracy twice, does not re-roll an enemy's defense. They have a full rundown, which we've already gone over, but we will be including this in the YouTube notes. So if anyone wants to check it out. This behavior will be reflected everywhere except for Tombs of a Mask it, where it will still act as it did before the nerf. And also, I wish um, companies would just say nerf instead of adjustments 
You know that it happened on stream where I called it a nerf and someone was like, well, actually, it was a bug. And I was like, it's still a nerf. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I hate it when people are like, oh, yeah, we've uh, we've changed this weapon. I'm like, no, you have you have, you nerfed, have nerfed it. it. it or is, you've buffed it. That is a definition of but a nerf. But they'll say buff. Uh, yeah, they'll say buff. It's like weird trigger words that they don't want to use because they they know it'll upset people. Yeah, it's like... But we all know what it means. No, you, you have made this item worse, yes. which is the definition of a nerf. Even if it was a bug, still you're nerfing it. Yeah, <laughs> e even if it's the same in some instances, it is worse in other instances, which is overall worse. The definition of a nerf. Yeah. Either way, it's just a weird thing. Yeah. Moving on, they talk about Halloween 2022, which I can't believe we're still talking about this at Christmas time. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. We're glad you're all enjoying the Halloween goodness because you've been so ghoulishly delightful. We're buffing the event so you'll enjoy it even more. Firstly, you'll get more treats per drop, a higher chance to get treats in the first place, and a reduced cooldown on the treats when gathering logs ore or fish. Generous traders are more common to hang around for longer. We've also reduced their spawn delay so they'll appear faster too. I never even ran into one of the generous traders. I've never seen one. Yeah, exactly. Well, you didn't play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so rare. I don't even see them in real life. Lastly, we've noticed you guessing the size of the global ghouls. Sorry, goals. As anywhere between 500 mil to a bill. As a heads up, it's not even as much as the smallest of guesses and may even be off by a couple hundred mil. So if you didn't know, like you had to add candy to this cauldron and the cauldron would just like have different effects the more candy you add. Unfortunately, like they said, it was kind of hard to get a lot of candy. So they've only met one goal. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, so I'm glad that they're, like, buffing that, but they should have just made it more in the first place. Like, I think... Yeah, because now less people are going to be doing it. Exactly. I think Kitty Toes did um, a mill and had to spend several hours doing that. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, that's hard. <laughs> Most people aren't going to do it for several hours. They'll do it for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Glad they did that. Should have done it a little earlier, though. Also, I did think it was funny that the Halloween quest, or the Halloween event is out longer than it's been out after halloween than it was before halloween yeah it doesn't make sense it's yeah i think it's because they're like oh shoot we wanted to meet these cauldron goals honestly i saw pictures of like their original ideas and it is gonna look really cool if we meet the goal if <laughs> if yeah moving on to crack the clue three so it's been over a month since crack the clue three began and we've been thoroughly enjoying watching all of you treasure hunters solve the clues created by the fantastic wooks and if you're wanting to start, don't worry, guys. It is too late. They have links to the 2007 escape, Crack the Clue, both on Reddit. There's a Discord server for them. You can check out all these resources if you want to start cracking the clue, which I still didn't do. Whoops. Yeah, me neither. It's kind of hard. Like, I was so excited about it. Then I looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God, there's so many tiles in this game. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually... <laughs> so uh, many tiles in this it's game. It's actually hard. Yeah. Some other small changes. So they corrected the 42 mining requirement for what lies below to a, be a recommendation. The issues with the divine pouch Trauver, is that how you say it? Trauverd? I don't yeah. know. And clean the visibility bug in the force slot and the issue where the ZMI payment menu wouldn't highlight correctly have been fixed. You may now reclaim the darkness of Hallowville reward tomb after completing a taste of hope from the chest located at the Bergderot hideout, if you like. Fix some incorrectly formatted dialogue in the big chompy bird hunting quest. The world switcher now displays all worlds correctly for players who have opted out of fresh start worlds. And for mobile only, they've optimized the on tap highlights to help with frame rate dropping issues. And for Steam only, tool tips will no longer be cut off on the right side of the screen. And yeah, that is it for the updates. They also moved around the PvP worlds. Yeah, and uh, it is yeah. max med loadouts for the Duel Arena. Oh, yes. Duel Arena. The well, PvP arena. The PvP arena with all the really <laughs> cool rewards. Definitely not dead content. They're like, there's no PvP content. Vote no on all the PvP content. <laughs> yeah, but that is going to be about it for our updates yes. this week. We are going to end off with a Q&A as yeah. normal. So our question from Matt on Instagram this week. Uh, also, Matt asked first, do Hargar and I ask too many questions? I already responded, but I'd like to say this too, just for everyone. I've been really bad at responding to anyone about anything lately. I appreciate you guys reaching out, asking questions, even like doing anything on Discord. And I'm so sorry. I've just been so bad at replying to people. It's yeah. weirdly a lot of effort for me right now. But no. Uh, if Depression anything, rubs. If anything, we prefer more questions. Yeah. we would. <laughs> I'm like, I like it when you ask two questions. What are you talking about? <laughs> Keep yeah. asking. Yeah. Also, you guys ask like the most random questions that I would have never thought of. So I love it. Yeah. All right. So Matt's question. What are your thoughts on a new level 99 fishing quest about catching a whale? So... Matt wrote, it would start at Port Sarum in the pub where sailors are talking about the mythical giant whale. Then you and a crew steal the King of Feldor's ship, sail out to the sea, find the whale, and have a huge boss fight. 
The whale is then cooked for the king of Faldor for a feast after being pardoned for your stealing. And the bones are buried in the park for all the wounded Faldor soldiers who died at sea. For the rewards, you would get free ship rides to every location by human sailors because they are now a legend in Gilnor's sailor community. You get the whale skin outfit, which you craft out of the skin from the whale you kill, which I thought was gnarly. <laughs> a trophy for your house. Access to the king's warship, which takes you to the king of Faldor's secret island prison for war criminals. I don't know what you do there, though. LOL. And the requirements for this. You would need 99 fishing, 75 construction. This would be for ship repairs during the fight. 80 cooking to cook the whale. 85 prayer to bury the carcass. 85 fire making to light a bonfire to cook the whale. 80 thieving to secretly steal the keys to the warship. And 70 crafting to make your whale skin suit. Cool. I like it. I don't know if people would vote yes on a quest that has 99 requirement. I, I was going to say something similar. I yeah. was going to say I think the idea is well planned. You honestly like put so much effort into this quest idea. I feel like they have to add it. But I don't know if they, 99 would be good. And Yeah, I, I would be a really big fan of them coming out with any quests that have very high requirements. Yeah. Like that, like um, like more than Song of the Elves. But it could be more like is, 85, maybe. Yes, because Song of the Elves right now is the highest in, in the game, in, in general. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think something higher like 80 or 85 would be cool. Because um, I think 80 is pretty high for most people. 85 is definitely really high for a lot of people. Yeah, I'm only 91. And so, or, it, you know, just in general, like most people don't have base 80s. Like anyone that you know that's maxed is definitely part of the you know less than one percent mm -hmm. or whatever and fishing is the longer one to max and so and also on top of that um so i think that'd be cool but on top of that i think that any 99 quest would have to be a joke quest like it oh, couldn't, yeah, it it couldn't, couldn't have, have significant gains like i i mean do you think that the ships and stuff would be fair I think the ships and stuff would be fair because yeah. that's just a small amount of gold. And then fashionscape outfit. Yeah, and that's then the fashionscape outfit's cool. But I was thinking immediately whenever I was thinking that, I think all those rewards would be cool. I don't know how the quest would work out, but I think it'd be cooler if it was a joke quest and you end up fishing up like this rich dude. <laughs> like like a whale, get it? Oh, yeah, that's funny. So like a rich dude and like he's the one that pays for all your ships or something like that. Oh, that could work. Yeah, I think that'd be funny because it would have to be like a joke quest. Like you can't be like the coolest quest in the game. You have to have 99 that's construction. Fair. It's like. All right, so as is, we'd want it to be a little bit lower requirements. But if it's 99, make it a little more silly. Yeah, like yeah. maybe they'll have like because I do it, like the idea of fighting a whale, and it would have to be like a off quest because you can't. They can't be like, all right, to get your cape, you have to have ninety nine. But they something. are doing the thing now where the quest capes won't need every quest. No, that's oh not, no, that's oh that's, that's for the, the elite. Yeah. yeah. Oh, never mind. True, I don't think that the quest capes should require ninety nine. Yeah, what, but I do like the idea in general. I think like what you said, like a requirement of eighty five would be cool. Yeah. Because that's still like mega that's still, high. We'll take yeah, forever. That's still very, very high. But it's more attainable. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely much more attainable. And I like I, the idea. I love though. the idea. Like, I want to go fight a whale. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> and it sounds like something that would be in RuneScape, honestly. Like, you're at a pub and you overhear them. Yeah. I think it'd be cool if, like, yeah, you fish up, like, maybe it's even like a like Davy Jones style where, like, you fish up, like, this treasure chest and this ghost of a whale. <laughs> or, you know, like a rich person that died with their treasure. Like, <laughs> you rescue him and then like hook him up or help him out and then he's the one that pays for your stuff and then he's like oh i used to be a whaler literally and so here's this whale suit something like that that's funny yeah, i like both cool. those all right now moving on to harger's question of the week in a hypothetical future jagex decides to implement a massive movement change to osrs no longer is the movement point and click but rather characters are controlled by arrow keys all interactions remain in mouse click format what are your thoughts i like this if they change the angle of the cameras i think I can't imagine the view that I have right now walking like that. Mm. I also wouldn't want arrows. I'd want like WASD. Well, yeah. I'm assuming like that works. Yeah, obviously. Um, yeah, I hate this idea. I don't I don't know if I'd actually want it. Because I think part of the beauty of RuneScape is how AFK would be. That you can click on your mini map and then just like slowly walk over there while you're not paying attention. Yeah, I think it would be lame because the only reason RuneScape is popular is because it is the game that it is mm -hmm. like if you changed it like that and like started making it more modern in that way then it's like why am i not just playing world of warcraft that's true because i think it could be something that's like a runelite plugin like I optional mean, 
Maybe, but I think if anything, I would want to see. I I don't I I don't think I'd ever want that. I think if anything, I might be convinced to look at um like a movement style like an ARPG, like Diablo, or like Lost Ark, where it's still top down and it's still clicking, but it's not on a grid system like how RuneScape is. Mm -hmm. Um, that would change so many things, but. That's probably as close. You prefer that. That's as close as I would get to a modern movement system. I think it'd be cool. I just don't. It's. I also have a bad imagination. To be fair. I just don't see how it would work in RuneScape really and make sense. It would just feel kind of off. It, yeah, that's why most, or that's why every ARPG action RPG style game where it's top down, like how RuneScape is, doesn't do that because it's weird. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you know Path of Exile, Diablo, all those big games. Torchlight, they all use click movement, but it's just not on a grid like how OSRS does it because that's right. just really weird and old. I still do think it could be a plugin though for people who want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> no reason not to do that. I mean, it's optional then. Yeah, either way, I wouldn't want it because I would just, that I think that would be changing the game to a game that I don't want to play. Yeah, I don't think I'd want it. I'm not 100% sure though. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what are you going to be doing this week? You're going to log uh, in with me? I am going to log in to, to Overwatch. Overwatch. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to play that right after this, probably. And, we're going to um, make dinner, though. I stream in like 45 minutes. <laughs> yes, we are going to make dinner and play Overwatch. So those are my plans for the next every day until next week when I tell you those are my plans. Yep. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> yeah, I might play other things. I might play some Minecraft. Um, I play some other games with some friends. I did play some Deep Rock Galactic, I forgot to mention. Oh. That game's always really fun. It's kind of like Starship Troopers, if you've ever seen that movie, Killing mm -hmm. Big Bugs. Um, but yeah, I'll be playing other games for sure. So that'll be pretty interesting. Awesome. Yep. What about you? I'm going to keep playing RuneScape. I'm going to do some raids. I'm going to try and get my Motherload Mining log filled out. We'll see if I can finish that. I want to, this week, finish that scary game so I can start the next Resident Evil. Finish some games in less than 20 hours. Oh, my God. The Resident Evil ended up taking me, like, 30 hours. I yeah, kind of crazy. It was brutal. Uh, apparently, it's, like, the longest one, though, so that's good. <laughs> and compared to one of the other ones, it only took me, like, 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Nutty. But, yeah, I want to uh, finish that game because I'm, like, I'm really interested in what's happening in this story, but it sucks because I'm having fun with raids. It's it's kind of interesting being a streamer because you want to do all this stuff, but you don't want to do it off stream. Yeah. And then after this game, you're going to start Skyrim, right? No. People have been telling me Skyrim would take me forever, but I'd probably like it. Yeah, it would. Well, you can finish the game in as little as like five hours. If but you only I did, probably wouldn't, right? Yeah. If you only did the storyline. Yeah. But and I'd want to do more. Also, realistically, people have spent upwards of 100 hours and even wow. some people have spent like over 1,000 hours. <gasps> okay. Jeez. Also, there's tons of mods for the game that add, like, entire expansions worth. And there are expansions in the game. See, I Skyrim maybe in a couple of years. I have a lot of games I need to play that people have given me that I feel bad not playing it. Okay, so she, just, <laughs> she hates on the north, all right? Oh, also, real quick, that reminded me. I wanted to give a shout-out to Kofly, who, uh, from our Throne wish list, exclamation point wish list on the stream, if you want to order something from that. It's like Legos, mostly. Uh, ordered us all dress chips being shipped from Canada. Oh, yeah. All <laughs> and I'm actually so excited. From the Great White North. Yeah, everyone's been talking about how good they are. So I'm really hyped to try those. Yes. But anyway, if you guys want to check out the stream, I stream 40 hours a week, five days a week at twitch.tv slash boonbabe. Come say hello. Come join me for some raids, maybe. Encourage me to play scary games. Play noises while I play scary games because we're trying to trying to see how much we could shorten my life. It's actually for a scientific study. Okay. How much will the stress ruin me? All right. Uh, if you guys want to ask us questions, you can you can on Twitch, our YouTube's Boon Babe, our Instagram's Boon Babe, and our Twitter's Boon Babe OSRS. Literally has them anywhere and be like, yo, podcast question, and ask us there. Yeah. Feel free to join our Discord. We do weekly long giveaways. And uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. Make yeah. sure to yeah join if you want to hang out or anything like that. And mm -hmm. we'll see you all. Very soon. Very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Meep, merp, merp.